Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure that we participate in this uh, highly informative conference. Uh, so today, uh, together with one of the co-authors and a colleague of mine, we're going to present the, our work titled Video Games as a Symbolic Transitional Justice Policy Overview, Concepts and Research Directions. Key concepts that we are going to look into detail in the next slides include memory and transitional justice museums, video games, and uh, the potential of both of these to evoke empathy, historical empathy, and transitional justice. Also, we're going to see that little attention has been given to the potential of a video game to promote transitional justice and act as a symbolic transitional justice policy. Uh, first of all, uh, museums do not uh, constitute only buildings that exhibit artifacts, but there are cultural institutions where visitors can gain uh, experiences and to wear learning experiences, to be more specific, and where all senses are activated. Thus, uh, museums give visitors the opportunity to imagine, explore, and experience empathy firsthand. Uh, also here, let me uh, introduce, uh, introduce to those who don't know, uh, to the concept of historical empathy, which is uh, something that is created by visiting museums uh, and uh, historical empathy uh, there is not a consensus regarding uh, what historical empathy is but uh, in uh, our work we uh, adopt the one by Edacott and Brooks who state that uh, it refers to knowing uh, that uh, not only knowing historical facts uh, but also understanding that people in the past had, had different beliefs and motivations when they acted in the way they acted uh, and that these events occurred in a different social and historical context. Thus, they propose that there are three aspects for the creation of historical empathy, historical contextualization, perspective taking and affective connection. Also, uh, there are several studies that have, have focused uh, on uh, the uh, potential of museums to foster empathy and some key insights uh, that uh, uh, we saw uh, is that, that we saw by reading these uh, works uh, is that uh, first of all, it helps when people have background knowledge about uh, the events uh, uh, when they visit a particular museum. Also, uh, another thing that can uh, contribute to the level of empathy a person uh, acquires is a, a collective memory. A collective memory is another concept uh, that does not have a consensus, uh, but the popular one is that uh, it is a type of memory uh, shared between people that belong to the same community or society. Uh, also, last but not least, uh, artifacts are more powerful when they are connected to a particular story. Uh, the stories told uh, through objects exhibited uh, are more engaging than uh, artifacts themselves. Uh, another concept that has attracted attention by uh, a lot of scholars is transitional justice that is related to attributing uh, justice after uh, genocidal crimes, uh, ensuring that uh, this uh, that uh, memory is preserved and uh, that atrocities are not repeated. Uh, there is a, there are a lot of mechanisms. Uh, to achieve this, both judicial and non-judicial, uh, such as uh, trials, truth commissions, uh, establishment of uh, non-governmental organizations, uh, but also there are uh, symbolic traditional justice uh, policies, and uh, this include uh, memorial museums, uh, where knowledge is acquired about these injustices, inflicted upon a, particular, upon a particular group of people and the violence exhibited towards them. Uh, 
the truth is that uh, due to uh, the fact that these type of museums, uh, which is, uh, here let me add, a new form of museums, constitute the second most valuable form of state reparations after financial compensation, uh, which uh, emphasizes the importance of the uh, establishing uh, these museums because they contribute to uh, telling uh, people's uh, uh, story, uh, stories of peoples that have experienced injustices. Uh, also, as uh, also another uh, medium uh, that uh, can be used for uh, fostering empathy is video games. Uh, due to the fact uh, that they can create immersive experiences. And uh, one of uh, their uh, strengths is uh, that uh, through uh, attractive graphics and uh, a narrative, a compelling narrative, as in the case of uh, 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 This World of Mine at Gone Home, uh, they can evoke emotional experiences and uh, lead to thought-provoking uh, situations. Uh, they also can function as vehicles for uh, depicting the injustices that disadvantaged uh, groups face, and uh, the player can have a glimpse into uh, the uh, difficulties uh, that uh, people, uh, for example, that they don't, uh, that uh, uh, have a different uh, sexual orientation that uh, what is a what uh, is uh, considered normal, which is not more normal, of course, but this is what uh, our society dictates, a uh, face, and uh, or uh, what the uh, difficulties people who, um, uh, uh, or for example, refugees, difficulties that uh, refugees have to deal with. And uh, that's why, um, it is uh, important that uh, this medium, which is a popular one, is used to depict uh, such uh, social issues. Uh, a video a zan of video games uh, that uh, have uh, uh, that can motivate people to learn about the past is a uh, historically themed uh, video games which can uh, encourage people to look up information about events and pursue learning goals on their own, on their uh, own, uh, something also known as tangential learning. Uh, now, I'm going to give the floor to one of the other co-authors of uh, the paper and the uh, colleague, Konstantinos Apostolakis. Thank you, Stefania, and uh, good afternoon from my side as well. So continuing on and from uh, uh, incorporating the game developers and game designers perspective uh, into this uh, work, uh, we have seen from an analysis that uh, there is a high correlation between uh, how uh, people experience a visit uh, at a museum and what they experience during uh, their time playing a video game. Both experiences can be thought of as being highly user-centered. Uh, they are both uh, quite experiential uh, in terms of uh, what the player sees and what the player feels and uh, how they are instructed uh, to navigate through a story. And uh, also uh, they can encourage players to uh, actually uh, seek more information out after uh, either visiting or playing video games. What is more important uh, is how we uh, have uh, discovered through literature how both uh, these two experiences uh, will trigger uh, similar experiential modules. So this is about uh, sensing, about uh, reflecting, about uh, seeing, and uh, about uh, making judgment uh, about past people and their predicaments. So uh, if we can think uh, of museums as these spaces that can act as uh, some sort of uh, social dialogue in order to uh, make people uh, think about past atrocities and uh, injustices that were inflicted uh, upon uh, people, then uh, it is uh, very uh, likely that video games can be used to the same uh, effect because of the potential of video games to contribute to memory making 
uh, in such uh, in such uh, discourse. Uh, however, uh, what we have found is that there is uh, practically no uh, work uh, currently that has actually started examining video games under the lens of uh, becoming a symbolic transitional justice policy. So we look at the different ways in which museums and video games create empathy. So museums do so by developing the narrative and the visitor experience in terms of thinking about the best way and time in which to introduce the events and the characters, uh, the context uh, and the motives, and also deciding on how many of those perspectives to include and uh, also in what ways to achieve uh, the desired learning outcomes. In a physical exhibition, uh, the spatial arrangement of objects is key to control the narrative discourse. Each artifact uh, encodes a set of desired effective properties so that uh, the act of walking through a room filled with uh, exhibits becomes a compelling and emotional experience that can be created by simply looking uh, at the different items in the collection and reading the item descriptions. Uh, video games, we found, employ similar strategies. Uh, they construct the game story or uh, cultural lore uh, by encouraging uh, exploration. Uh, this means that they increase basically the player's agency and uh, thereby we also have what we call effective materiality. So uh, we increase the sense of responsibility of the player interacting with this environment and whilst navigating through this environment and handling its materials, uh, we can increase the emotional investment uh, that this player, that the player has, uh, by thinking that they are actually acting upon an, a real, actual environment. They also can utilize the objects uh, and the spaces uh, as a means to convey emotions and messages. And uh, also, uh, they have uh, been studied uh, for a long time as a means to uh, take up perspective taking. Uh, by allowing players to experience events from different perspectives and thereby uh, offer different points of view. Uh, for instance, uh, being the victim in a situation, being the oppressor or being an observer. So uh, the key takeaway from this, as researchers have suggested, is that video games can contribute to memory making initiatives uh, in as much capacity and along with museums. Uh, therefore, uh, new opportunities are opened up for using video games as tools in pursuit for promoting uh, education, reconciliation and healing, which are uh, very important topics uh, in transitional justice. Uh, but the ways in which museums and video game industry professionals can interact, exchanging good practices and design philosophies on creating empathy, uh, remain relatively unexplored. So to realize this potential, uh, we report that experts in memory and heritage studies uh, should work more closely together uh, with game developers and define guidelines in order to create these empathy inducing video games around particularly sensitive topics and specialty collections that they curate in their museums. Uh, it also needs uh, the two disciplines to work together to identify uh, in which means museums and video games each create empathy and how to draw inceptive parallels between them. And finally, uh, adapt the different strategies that museums already employ uh, in, in their exhibitions and uh, translate them, if you will, into video game storytelling frameworks and mechanics. Uh, how we can do this is by basically creating a platform for collaboration between museums and game developers. So this platform would be interesting for museums because they can broaden their reach and also engage with audiences uh, on a potentially global scale because not everyone is basically capable of visiting a museum. Uh, and also game developers uh, can experiment with actual real stories that are driven by what is called place-based memory. Uh, the end goal for this would be to come up with a design and then development workflow uh, where the design philosophies of the museum exhibitions can be translated into exploration driven uh, video game experiences that are filled with atmosphere and a sense of discovery. Uh, then uh, this would need to develop and validate exemplar games that are based on this kind of transitional justice museum collections and make sure that they validate them that their goals uh, are achieved. 
Here you can see uh, basically uh, our proposal framework for how such a collaboration can be started, uh, starting from game industry standards and practices for mass entertainment games. Uh, then, uh, of course, we need to set up the ethical guidelines and requirements, and I will go into a bit more detail about that in my next slide. Uh, existing state-of-the-art framework and guidelines analysis to create the theoretical background. Uh, historical empathy and transitional justice design elements in order to extract and distill the museum design philosophies and uh, going through a co-creation and co-design methodology uh, in order to exchange cross-discipline perspectives and views and create the content. Then uh, we can come up with the specific parallels for creating uh, game-specific storytelling frameworks and finally uh, provide concrete guidelines and processes for how video games can be built as uh, to act as symbolic transitional justice policies. Specifically for the interest of this conference and for the ethical guidelines and requirements, uh, ethical caveats and uh, requirements that we can uh, identify for this uh, would be uh, that uh, specific uh, action needs to be taken to avoid potentially uh, misguiding, let's say, an otherwise well-intended uh, initiative to build a game around something such sensitive and uh, something such uh, uh, contested, let's say, uh, among different cultures. Uh, one of these problems would be to avoid sensationalizing atrocities and trauma. Uh, which is akin to what uh, is called dark tourism. So game players will be transported to times and places uh, where suffering and atrocities may have occurred. And thereby, uh, we need to find ways in which uh, we want to make people connect with the past in a tangible manner. Uh, we want to uh, service and remind people of their responsibility to remember the past and also seek out further knowledge about an event. And finally, invite people to contemplate uh, temporality of life and create empathy for uh, the uh, victims and the suffering they have experienced. Uh, it should be very critical to uh, not uh, try to, you know, uh, exaggerate uh, pain and suffering for thrills and chills. Uh, also, uh, we need to be very mindful that basically game developers have the power to control the politics of memory and uh, how they depict this memory, the perspectives and the voices that they choose to empower. Basically through the narrative, they have the power to change uh, the, the discourse and direct the player's attention to uh, things that they want. So it's very important that developers understand and respect that power and also that they portray and contextualize the different uh, predicaments, roles and actions of people in contested historical moments. Uh, it's also very important to under, for the player to understand that these actions were taken in a very different historical timeline to what is modern today and thereby not uh, make judgment about actions uh, without you know, uh, thinking about the actual predicaments and the history and the time in which people in the past have lived. Also, it's very important to make careful design choices when portraying sensitive topics, because uh, we definitely want to uh, avoid re-traumatization of people that may have experienced similar and uh, uh, other uh, difficult, but likewise uh, topics uh, such as uh, war, uh, assault, and other very difficult, difficult subject matter. Uh, finally, uh, there are specific policies and sensitivities that uh, game developers need to be aware of uh, around the depiction of material that need to be respected. So in conclusion, uh, our analysis of video games and their potential to contribute to memory making in parallel with museum activities has shown us that games can become agents for promoting change, promoting reconciliation and healing uh, for those social groups that have suffered in the past or in some cases are still suffering. Uh, the potential of video games to achieve persuasive outcomes with respect to transitional justice is currently overlooked and we want to direct the attention of the scientific community to this gap. And finally, that uh, to design such video games, uh, careful planning and execution are needed and also uh, we need very careful ethical guidelines and uh, create uh, validation and quality criteria to make sure that these games can achieve their goal. Uh, our next steps in this and the next steps that we uh, think that the scientific community should take in this will be uh, to develop a framework, to define the guidelines for creating games, uh, 
uh, in order to induce empathy and achieve memory making, and also uh, to develop this framework in close collaboration between game developers and experts in memory and heritage studies, so that each one of the disciplines can appreciate one another, understand what they have, what they can offer each other, and what they cannot offer each other, and uh, through this collaboration, create the most impactful experiences that they can offer. And with that, and on behalf of my co-author, Stefania, I would like to thank you for your attention.